This is a generic video in a series of generic videos about how to build a lithium ion battery pack without using a BMS. What? Are you nuts? You can't build a battery pack without a BMS. Everybody knows that. Well, when you're done watching these videos, you will know how to build a lithium ion battery pack that has an instrument panel on it so you know that your cells are balanced. You'll also learn how to build a lithium ion battery pack that will have triple the life of a pack with the BMS. And what's the drawback to this? A, you have to be a little bit nerdy. You have to push a couple buttons to program the hobby charger. But if you're the kind of person that's out here scouting YouTube, looking for videos on how to install BMSs, I figure you can handle it, right? So why in the world would anyone want to build a lithium-ion battery pack without one of these? Well, there's actually a whole bunch of reasons. For me, the number one reason is, I don't know if it's working or not. Well, you don't get any feedback loop. You don't see the voltages. You don't know that your battery is balanced. How do you know if this thing's working or not? You just have to trust it. Man, it doesn't smell good, man. I think it's burnt. Something isn't working, man. You want, you want to do that? No, you want to have an instrument panel on your battery so you can see what's going on. The number two reason is they really don't balance for beams. If your pack is nice and new and made with very high quality cells, it will stay within a few hundredths of a volt whether the BMS is working or not. But when your pack ages or, uh, heaven forbid, you made it from laptop cells that you scrounge from battery packs you bought off eBay, that BMS will not keep it balanced. So if your battery is perfect, you don't need a BMS. And if your battery is bad, a BMS won't work. So what's that about? I think the thing about the BMS is to keep the battery functioning long enough to get the battery past the warranty period. See, the real trouble with balancing with the BMS is all BMSs work by bleeding down the battery. That means they look at the highest cell, the cell that's over 4.2 volts, and they turn on one of these little resistors here. Oh, like, like these little resistors here. And uh, that's supposed to bleed down your battery. But they're pretty useless. They're like the size of a couple grains of wheat. They don't draw that much current. They can't draw enough current in any reasonable amount of time, do any kind of job with any battery that's unbalanced. Oh, yeah, and that arrow points to a burnt out one. And probably the number three reason I don't like BMSs is that they go rogue. The gods of electronic circuitry cause the BMS to shut down for no known reason. You might see voltage, but there won't be any current, so your bike won't roll. So there you are, you're stuck by the side of the road, miles from nowhere, attempting to bypass the BMS with bits of road debris, your battery on a tarp, you're sitting there on the sidewalk. That's no fun. I've done it enough. The fourth reason, fourth, is that they shut off the battery when a cell gets low. Well, that's good. You want to know when a cell is low. You don't want to ruin your battery. But wouldn't you rather the BMS just said, hey friend, a cell is getting low you might want to find a place to charge soon. Instead, it just goes and makes you pedal. I want to make that decision. I don't want the BMS to make it for me. Well, BMSs also shut off the current draw when the current draw is too high, like if there's a short or something. But so does this. This is a hobby charger. And here are the advantages of using a hobby charger. All we do is hit start. Start. Does a balance battery check and it starts charging. Very simple. Now if I want to look at the voltages on the cells, I just push this. And you can see that it's giving me the voltages on cells 1 through 6. The blinking one means that it's bleeding that one down. So I know that this battery is balanced when it's done because I can read this and I can see. You just don't know that with a BMS. So when you use a hobby charger to balance your batteries, you also get much more serious balancing power. Um, you see, these charger balancers can get hot and they actually have cooling fans in them. They can bring a battery that's out of balance back into balance. You don't have to trust 
that the BMS is working, you can verify that the cells are balanced. All these BMSs start balancing at 4.2 volts per cell. If you charge and balance at 4 volts per cell, you can triple the life of your battery. That is huge. Also, the power from your battery is not impeded by the circuitry in the BMS because your battery, when it's running, will be going directly to the motor. If this should ever quit or go bad, you don't have to take your battery apart and unwire it. All you gotta do is buy a new one and plug it into the, the plugs that come outside your battery. But if this goes bad, how do you know? What do you do? It's pretty simple, actually. You wait for your battery to fail. The cells become unbalanced, they become damaged, some will get undercharged, some will get overcharged, and your battery capacity will drop off to the point where you can't stand it and get a new battery. Would you rather do that, waste your battery, or spend maybe a little bit more and have an instrument panel on your battery? The parts that complements hobby chargers really well are cell loggers. They're inexpensive. They run less than $5. They are the instrument panel into your battery and they also provide a low voltage alarm. They mount them in these planes when they get ready to fly them. They have this alarm set to go off at a preset low voltage, say three volts. So when they're flying and they hear the buzzer sound, they know, oops, one of the cells of their battery is at three volts, it's time to land. You can monitor up to eight cells in, peril, um, in series using this. You can monitor an 8S battery using one of these. If you have more than eight cells in series, and you probably do if you have an electric bike, probably 10 to 14 cells in a series, you need two of these. So, we can use hobby chargers to better balance and to triple the lives of our batteries. We can use cell loggers to monitor the cell's voltages while we are riding and warn us of low cells. We can use fuses to protect us from overcurrent situations. We can ditch our BMSs and be better off because of it. Yay, power to the people. Okay, Sean, reel it in, reel it in. <clears throat> so here is why hobby chargers and cell loggers aren't used more commonly. The cheapest and most common hobby chargers only balance six parallel groups. Usually it's in the name, like a 206B. Others will do up to 10. Here's an eye charger that does 10 cells at once. If you have a 36 volt battery, you're gold, because 36 volt batteries, lithium ion chemistry, are 10 S's. But what if you have a 14 S battery, like a common 50 volt battery? There's only one that does it, it's called the Thunder Power, and that will balance 14 S batteries. However, unfortunately, I can't recommend it. Mine has failed. So, let's take a look at the workaround. A split battery pack. What if you take like a 14S battery and make it in two little batteries, two 7S batteries? And then you hook them back up in series to run them, but when you want to charge them, you just take apart the series wiring and put them in parallel and just charge them individually. You can either break the battery apart mechanically and move one to one part of your vehicle, another to another part of your vehicle, or you can keep them together in the same case and break it apart electrically. Let's do that. Let's take an old 14S 5P battery that I've got in my shop, wire it up and make it into a two 7S batteries. We'll leave the battery intact. I'll show you how to do that next. Here we have a 5P 14S battery. 5P, five cells wired in parallel. One, two, three, four, five. And 14 cells wired in series. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So what we're going to do is transform this into a 5P, seven cells wired in series. So we gotta find where the two seven cells are joined together. And let's count up seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So right here, all these have to be cut and removed. So now I've gone and, and uh, cut the piece out that separated these two. So let's find the two new battery terminals. This is the negative terminal of one battery. And we'll count out seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And here is the positive terminal. This is the positive terminal of this battery. Okay? And here is the positive, uh, the negative terminal of this battery. And this, of course, would be the positive. 
I've made my little pigtails here, and there you have it. There's the two leads coming off the two uh, positive and negative terminals of the two batteries. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll create the series wiring that will connect this battery back together. Make a 14S battery out of these two 7S's batteries. Okay, here we have the harness made. Voila! We've just made one battery again out of two. However, we can still take them apart and, uh, and charge them with a 8S hobby charger. These connectors are called JST-XH connectors. They plug right into these prongs. The cell logger has got things written on the back at the negative terminal. It starts over here on this side. So I want to find the wire opposite the red, the negative, and hook it up in there. And now this is my negative wire, okay? So this wire goes to the negative terminal of one of the batteries and this wire goes to the positive terminal of the same group of cells. And this goes to positive 2, positive 3, 4, 5, 6, etc. When I wire up one for this side of the battery, I'm going to take this negative and bring it over here to this negative terminal. Well, I've got my first cell logger wire hooked up here. So let's look at this battery. Let's see what it tells us. This is an old battery. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while. Okay, so we find the positive, the negative, hook it up according to the instructions, starts beeping, it says we got seven cells. Number one, 4.05, good. Two, there's the alarm. Two is low. Three's high. Four's five. Whoa, high. So, effectively, uh, now I've got a meter on this battery. Oh, there's that bad cell. There's the alarm going off. So if you're riding your bike and a cell started getting low, that's the noise you'd hear. Um, this battery could never be balanced with a BMS. I'm not even sure a hobby charger can bring it back because that one cell looks like it's dead. We have the second group of cells wired up. Let's hook up the cell logger and see what it tells us. Seven cells. 24 volts, number one. Okay. Four. Oh, four is low. 0.02 volts. Well, that's what you get. This battery lived on a BMS all its life. That's why it came to my shop for repair. It was just dead. No wonder this poor owner of this battery was losing range on his bike. Got two groups of cells that the BMS wasn't able to keep in balance, and finally they went out all the way. Here we have the hobby charger plugged in. You can see that we've got it plugged in to one half of the battery, this half over here. And we've got the newly installed sensor wires plugged into the hobby charge. So once the battery's balanced, then you can start charging it at 4 volts per cell. And when you do that, you'll get triple the battery life and you can charge both halves of the battery at the same time. But how do you take your, your charger and adjust it so you get 4 volts per cell? Well, let me show you how. This is just a common cheap like 2 amp charger. I do have it plugged in. When I'm fiddling around here, you got to be really careful. Here's my voltmeter. It's hooked up so you can see the voltage change. Now what you're looking for is right close to the output port, a little blue square box with a little tiny gold screw on top. And you adjust it while you're watching your voltmeter. Remember, I'm working with a live box connected up to 110. To say I am being careful is an understatement. Okay, so I'm finding a little head of that screw. Now I'm turning it. There we are. 57 divided by 14. We're at 4.07 volts per cell. That'll do it. So, I've shown you how to build a battery where you take the 14 um, S battery and split it into two halves. But I prefer a solution where you take the battery and you split it into two halves mechanically instead of electrically. And here's an example of that. This is uh, my Yuba Mundo. And on this side, I've got a battery pack down here. And over here, I've got another battery pack down here. Uh, the electrical junction box, of course, uh, makes the connection. I get 52 volts out of there. To monitor these different groups of cells, I have these cell loggers here. I'll turn them on. This is cells 1 through 7. 
And you can see it counting down the cells. And the other side is cells 8 through 14. You see it counting down the cells over there. So when I'm riding the bike and if I think that the battery might be getting low, I can turn these on and I have a low voltage alarm set to go off at 3 volts. And now I have the battery telling me, hey buddy, I'm getting a bit low. Maybe you want to do something about that. But at least I get to make the choice and not have the battery shut down on me. You can charge both sides at once, of course, because they're wired in series. So you adjust your charger to charge at 4 volts per cell, not 4.2. And you can plug it right in here and charge them both at once. However, there's no balancing action happening. You're just bulk charging. Oh, you're worried. One of the cell voltages might get too high. Not a problem. You're just charging to 4 volts and you over here and you've got a monitor where you can monitor the cell voltages. Now you know what's going on inside your battery. I noticed that my cells are getting a little bit unbalanced over here by checking this. So I hook up my hobby charger to balance it. These are the two leads that go up here that join the battery together and carry the sensor wires up here. And so this one's for power, of course, and this one's for the sensor wires. These are Deutsch plugs. This is a Deutsch plug. This is an XT90. Okay, so I've disconnected that, and I plug right into my battery with my hobby charger. Again, here's the sensor wires going in, and here's the XT90 going in. Okay, I'm taking a look. It says, uh, my, hob my hobby charger says that um, it's a 7S. Good. It wants to do a balance charge. Right. I push start. Checks the battery. And it starts balancing. I want to see how it's doing. What's the balancing coming out like? So I push this button. And it, start it gives me the voltages from the various cell groups. The ones that are blinking means that it's bleeding those. And it means it's, it's uh, charging the other ones. So I'll know when this is done because I'll be able to look and see, well, besides it alerts me. So that's how you manage this. Of course, you could do both sides at once. If you had a, a, what's called a parallel board, this is a really common item in the model airplane battery charging world. And because I'm charging this battery up to 4 volts per cell instead of 4.2, it's not going to last 500 cycles. It's going to last maybe 1,000 to 1,500 cycles. What does that mean? Well, I get about 60 miles on this rather modest battery. What is, what is 1,500 cycles times 60 miles? That's something like 80,000 miles. Yes, think about it. 80,000 miles out of this battery pack. That is what you get if you don't have a BMS that always charges you up to 4.2. Is it worth hacking and tinkering with? In my mind, absolutely yes. Hope you've enjoyed this. Bye.